Welcome to part two of section 8.1 on the square root property and completing the square. We just looked at that square root property in part one. This one we'll be doing with that's completing the square. So this is another method to solve the quadratic equations if ax squared plus bx plus c is, not, is equal to zero is not factorable. So if we have x squared plus bx be some binomials, then we can add b divided by 2a squared, which will form a perfect squared trinomial that we could then use to factor. So adding that would make x squared plus bx plus b divided by 2a squared. And we could factor that to just be x plus b over 2a squared. So in our case here, B here is 20. In this example of x squared plus 20x, we would add 20 divided by 2 squared, which basically means we'll be adding a number of 100. So this is x squared plus 20x plus 100. And it will factor to x plus 10 squared. So the leading coefficient for this must be one for us to use this to uh, solve a quadratic equation. If it is not, we first must divide the entire equation by that leading coefficient. Uh, and then you must add the square of half the middle term to both sides of the equation. So x squared plus three x is equal to zero. So to both sides of this equation, we need to take three, divide it in half and square it. This makes nine over four. We're going to add nine fourths to both sides of this. So we have x squared plus three x plus nine fourths is equal to nine fourths. We can then factor the left side. This would just be x plus three halves squared is equal to nine over four. And now when we take the square root of both sides, we get x plus 3 halves is equal to positive or negative 3 halves. And now we could subtract 3 halves. So x would be negative 3 halves plus or minus 3 halves. So the two solutions we would get, if we're subtracting these, we get negative three. If we were to add them, we get zero. So now we want to solve this equation by completing the square. Uh, X squared plus four X is equal to 12. So four divided by two, which makes us two. We would square that, we have four. We're going to add both sides, uh, four to both sides of this equation. So this would be x squared plus four x plus four is equal to 16. Left side factors to be x plus two squared is equal to 16. Then taking the square root of both sides, this makes x plus two is equal to positive of a negative four. Subtracting the two would give us x is equal to negative two plus or minus four. So the two numbers we would get when we subtract them, they make negative six. And when we add them, they make positive two. So an application of this is with compound interest. Um, A is equal to P times one plus R to the T power. Uh, this is for the annual interest rate. We want to find the annual interest rate R if in two years, an investment of $5,000 grows to $5,840. So $5,840 is equal to 5,000 times one plus R squared. We could divide by 5,000 first. which unfortunately does not go unevenly. 
So whatever decimal you get from 5,840 divided by 5,000 is supposed to equal to one plus R squared. And then we could square root both sides. So this is the square root of 5,840 divided by 5,000 is equal to one plus R. Subtracting the one both from both sides, we get R is equal to negative one. And this is supposed to be both positive and negative, but because we're, we're trying to grow money, I'm not going to bother with the negative version because then oh, we would be decreasing the money and well, that would make no sense for this. So we're gonna have plus the square root of 5,840 divided by 5,000. This makes 0 0.0396, so 3.96%. Uh, for example four, I have the function s of t is equal to 16t squared miles the distance s of t in feet that a skydiver falls t seconds after jumping from an airplane and falls 4,608 feet before opening a parachute. And we want to know for how many seconds was the diver in, in a free fall and then write in simplest radical form. So 4,608 is equal to 16t squared. We could first divide by 16 and get that t squared is equal to 288. Taking the square root of both sides gives us t is equal to, again, negative seconds makes no sense. So we're just going to take the positive version of this. So this is equal to the square root of 288. Um, as a decimal, that's about 16.97 seconds. But to write this in simplest radical form, we could factor out the biggest perfect square of 144 times two. So this is 12 times the square root of two. And then a 12 foot ladder is leaning against a building with the base of the ladder six feet from the building. How high up on the building will the top of the ladder reach? So we would have something like this. 12 here, six here, we want to find this side. So six squared plus X squared is equal to 12 squared. Uh, 36 plus X squared is equal to 144. Subtract the 36. So X squared is equal to 108. Taking the square root of both sides again, this is height, a negative value won't make any sense here. This is equal to the positive square root of 108. We can write that in simplest radical form as being six times the square root of three. Since 36 times three makes 108. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.